at number 10, the 10th best destination for Dak Prescott in 2025 is the New Orleans Saints. The New Orleans Saints, the 10th best destination for Dak Prescott. And here's why. So the reason the Saints are as low as they are is because that they are in as about, about as bad of a salary cap situation as you could possibly end. Okay. Also, you consider the fact that Dennis Allen, who will likely be fired at the end of this season unless the Saints go on to win the division, which I don't anticipate happening. But Derek Carr, I've always been a Derek Carr guy. I thought I've always thought for years he was like a the 10th, 11th, 12th best quarterback. Turns out probably not the case. And again, I like Carr. He's a starting quarterback in the NFL. Probably not a franchise guy at this point in his career. So you add Dak to an organization, though, that has Chris Olave, that has Alvin Kamara, albeit he's getting up there in age, and an organization, Mickey and Loomis, that drafts very, very, very well. Good defense, excellent defensive leaders, uh, good, strong defensive rookies that they've got on, on that side of the ball. In a division where the best quarterback as we sit here today is Kirk Cousins or Baker Mayfield. Take your pick. Dak's undeniably better than both. So in that case, Dak would be a good fit with the Saints. Only reason they're as low as they are, salary cap situation is nowhere near ideal. So for that reason, Dak won't even... Dak would likely, I think he would take less to another team, a, another better run franchise, with the, which the Saints obviously are. I just don't think he'd take that much less. Like, they'd probably have to pay him around $25, $30 million, and that's well below Dak's market value. But the Saints, nonetheless, the 10th best destination for Dak Prescott. At number nine in my home state, the Tennessee Titans. The Titans are the ninth best destination for Dak Prescott, and here's why. So again, another organization, and they would be higher if Mike Vrabel was still at the team. I, I, I always consider the Titans a relatively well-run franchise, but the decision to move on from Mike Vrabel as opposed to their terrible general manager is beyond me. That said, the Titans have historically drafted relatively well on offense. Brian Callahan's there. We'll see what he does. I actually think Brian Callahan will do a decent job with Will Levis, but if they're still not sold, the Titans still aren't sold on Will Levis after the end of next season. I Don't be shocked if they were to be in the running for Dak Prescott to add a team that's got some nice young, talented guys. Now, the problem for Tennessee is they're going to lose Derek, or they already did lose Derrick Henry to the Baltimore Ravens. So they're kind of in a rebuild stage, so for that reason, it would be tough, but Dak would be able to get compensated well. And again, Dak in 2025, will be 32 years old. So again, still in the prime years of his career, he's not going to have the longevity Brady did because newsflash, nobody's going to have the longevity Brady did because he is a cyborg and the great outlier as I've called him for years. But Dak, under the current rules and, and, and regulations to protect quarterbacks, can have another good five, six years of his of his prime to be able to allow the Titans to build a good team around him, the Titans, the ninth best destination for Dak Prescott. I consider moving this next team up higher, but again, similar to the Saints, they're in a rough salary cap spot, the Denver Broncos. The Broncos are the eighth best team, or eighth best destination, rather, for Dak Prescott in 2025, and here's why. So, Listen, Denver, I think, has one of the smartest head coaches in the NFL in Sean Payton. I think what Sean Payton was able to do is resurrect Russell Wilson's career. If Russell comes anything close to the 2022 season he had, his first season in Denver, trust me today, he is not a Pittsburgh Steeler. There's no question about that. Sean Payton able to resurrect Russ, get the most out of a guy who, again, as I said earlier with my Steelers, is at this point pretty much a game manager. But Denver, part of the identity for years has been great quarterback play and excellent defense. Dak would fill the great quarterback play. Now, the downside in Denver is because of the Russell Wilson contract, they're not going to have a whole lot of cap space. They're going to have a whole lot of freedom to be able to bring in a guy like Dak or pieces around him. So that, that's kind of the, the, the downside of it. But you pair Dak with Sean Payton, you're able to give him guys like Cortland Sutton and, and company. Again, another downside is you're in the same division as Patrick Mahomes. So that's not great. So, but again, in general, I think it would be a solid fit. The Broncos are the eighth best destination for Dak Prescott. The seventh best destination would be staying in division and going to the New York Giants. The Giants are the seventh best destination for Dak Prescott. And here's why. So the thing with the Giants that I have serious questions about is ownership. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Mara has made some really odd comments as of late talking about we're all in a Daniel Jones, but I also wouldn't have a problem if we drafted a quarterback at six. And then we're gutted that we lost Saquon Barkley. Well, if you're gutted, or he said we're sick that we lost Saquon Barkley. Well, if you're sick, then why'd you let him walk without even offering him a, a, another contract and let him go to the division rival Eagles? That said, Brian Dable, to me, the fact that he was able to, to fool the Giants and fool a lot of the NFL world into thinking that Daniel Jones was a franchise quarterback and get him, after only 15 touchdown passes, a $40 million per year contract tells me Brian Dable's a pretty good coach. As great as Josh Allen is, where did he reach his highest highs? with Brian Dable as his offensive coordinator with the Buffalo Bills. So my guess is Dak would have some excellent years with Dable. He would obviously have guys like, like, like Jalen Hyatt, who I'm still Tennessee guy, go balls. I still think has potential with good quarterback play to be successful. 
My, again, my only concerns, though, for the Giants are I don't necessarily trust their front office. Uh, they, they made some really, really bad salary cap decisions, financial decisions over the last few years. But the upside is the NFC East... Eh, look a little shaky. I'm not a buyer in the Eagles right now. I think their coaching staff, outside of their defensive coordinator, Vic Fangio, is atrocious. I think Jalen Hurts could take a step back because of that. And again, they are going to have to let some guys go because they have so many young players on their rookie contracts on that roster. Washington is rebuilding. I like where Washington's going. They're just not there yet. Dallas is dysfunctional, as has been the case for 30 years. The Giants, you could possibly say the same thing about. So again, some things I like. Being with Dable, I would love for Dak. As far as the organizational structure, I want it. That said, the Giants are the seventh best destination for Dak Prescott. At number six, going back to Mahomes' division, the AFC West, the Las Vegas Raiders. I kind of like this one. The Raiders, the sixth best destination for Dak Prescott, and here's why. So I think the Raiders are kind of starting to build something. Okay, I like their GM. I think he's doing some good things in terms of the draft and in terms of free agency. But you're able to retain uh, Antonio Pierce, okay? Because he, he transformed the culture in what was a mess under Do Josh McDaniels. Is the offense limited? Yes. Part of the reason the offense is limited is not just because of play calling, but because Aiden O'Connell is your quarterback. And Aiden O'Connell, again, nice kid, is fine. Seems like a good backup, if, if that, to me. But you have Devontae Adams. You have Dak Prescott, Devontae Adams. You're going to get Devontae Adams is going to put up CD Lamb numbers from what we saw last year and even the year prior with the Dallas Cowboys. You're able to give him a solid running game and improving offensive line, good weapons, and an excellent defense coached under Antonio Pierce. Now, again, and the Raiders do have a lot of salary cap, by the way, uh, salary cap space, uh, last I checked. But again, the downside, you got to face Mahomes twice a year. Now, folks might say, well, you got to face, face Herbert twice a year, too. That's a more that's a concern because it's Herbert and Jim Harbaugh. But keep in mind, Dak's beaten uh, Dak's beaten Herbert twice and outplayed him twice in his house. So that needs to be taken into consideration as well. But the Raiders, dare I say it, may be turning a, a new leaf to a certain degree. So I, I, I think it'd be a good destination for Dak in that regard. Now to the top five, and these five teams, I would be really, really. I like the Raiders. I'd be very excited if you went to the top five teams on this list. And this next one, I think, is going to shock you. At number five, the fifth best destination for Dak Prescott in 2025 is the New England Patriots. Yes, the Patriots, the fifth best destination for Dak Prescott, and here is why. So I'm sure you're asking yourself, the, the Patriots? Patriots? Bryson, you don't like the Cowboys, Ross. The Patriots is way worse. Correct. Here's the upside for the Patriots. A- Tons of cap space to be able to go out and get major free agents. Here's another big upside. I think Gerard Mayo and this new Patriots front office, my guess is they're going to do better than Belichick did in the last for the last decade in the draft. You know why? Because Belichick, regardless of what you think about him as a coach, was objectively awful as the GM of this football team for the last decade uh, plus with the New England Patriots. You're able to get an obvious upgrade at GM, a coach who is able to, uh, at least from what I've seen, adapt to the modern times, a Patriots organization that, who knows, could trade out of that number three pick, as I talked about on Monday, upgrade the receiving core, spend big on free agents, uh, or uh, next uh, next offseason, that is, and at the key cornerstone piece, you add Dak Prescott to a franchise that's boasted six Super Bowl titles. Will Dak do what Brady did? I don't think anybody outside of maybe Mahomes We'll do what Brady did. The fact of the matter is this. Brady hasn't been in New England in five years. So the pressure for Dak to live up to Brady won't be what it was for Cam Newton, for Mac Jones, for anybody who's been with the Patriots for the last half decade or so. We've got an upgrade at, in totality at head coach. I believe in Gerard Mayo. You absolutely upgrade the front office. If Belichick was still there, the Patriots wouldn't even made the top 10. Now that they have upgraded in some of those, in, in some of those ways... Being able to, to hopefully ace the draft. The draft, to me, will go a long way in, in determining whether or not this will be a good spot for Dak. If they ace it, which I think they have the potential to, I think the Patriots will be a beautiful spot for Dak Prescott, which is why the Patriots are the fifth destination for Rain Dakota Prescott. At number four, I, nah, this is a fun one. I thought about moving this one higher. The Seattle Seahawks. The Seahawks are the fourth best destination for Dak Prescott in 2025. And here's why. So, if nothing else, Dak will look really good in that that, that Seahawks blue. Now, those 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 terrible lime green uniforms. Ugh, I don't want to see any of that. The point of, it, all the, of this all is, though, Dak gets not one, not two, three tremendous wideouts. DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, Jackson Smith, and Jigba. Okay, you're also able to have a good tight end if, if he's there in 2025. 
in Noah Fant. This is a Seahawks team. This is a Seahawks front office that has done wonders in the draft the last two years regard, in, in, in many ways in regards to the Russell Wilson trade with all the first-round picks they got. They've upgraded their offensive line. Their defense, the, again, the loss of Pete Carroll does hurt. That's why the Seahawks aren't higher. Uh, we'll see what Will McDonald does. But this defense, Will McDonald, we saw what he did with the Ravens last year. We anticipate he has the potential to do that with the Seahawks this season. And again, you look at the NFC West. I'm sorry. The Cardinals are the Cardinals. They're always going to find a way to mess it up in some way. They're not a well-run franchise. The Rams are, but by 2025, Matt Stafford is going to be 37, 38 years old. So that's going to be a concern. The Rams might be looking for a new quarterback. And again, post-retirement of Aaron Donald. The 49ers are great, but if they decide to play, pay Brock Purdy top dollar money, or top level money, top of the uh, you know top market money, then they are screwed because they'll have to let go of ma- the majority of their key pieces, in particular guys like Chris McCaffrey, Debo Samuel, guys like that, maybe even Nick Bosa. I don't think they move off Bosa, but we'll see. And Ar- uh, not Armstead, um, um, shoot, Trent Williams could retire as well. I think this is a good spot for Dak. The Seahawks have been a well-run franchise for a long time. I did not like them firing Pete Carroll. Again, this, they'd be higher on this list if I knew what I was getting from Will McDonald. Uh, and if I had the confidence of Will McDonald that he was able to, to get it done as a head coach, this is his first opportunity. We'll see what he does with this new staff, with this new regime in Seattle. But that said, the Seahawks are the fourth best destination for Dak Prescott in 2025. At number three, love this one. Although I think the Dolphins should draft a guy. But uh, there you go. The Miami Dolphins, third best destination for Dak Prescott in 2025, and here's why. So again, if the Dolphins thought Tua was the answer, I'm sorry, folks, they would have paid him already. They could have paid him after 2022 when he lit the league on fire, but some injury questions. Well, he lit the league on fire successfully again, led the league in passing yards, was top five in in passer rating, was really his QBR was relatively high, if I remember correctly, and they still haven't paid him after four years in the league, obviously zero playoff wins, only one playoff appearance. Tua at least has had one playoff appearance at this point. We know Mike McDaniel from the Kyle Shanahan tree, great coach. Okay, gets the most out of Tua, gets the most out of the pieces he has in Miami. You have Tyreek, arguably the best player at his position in the league. You have a guy in Raheem Mostert. You have a guy like Jalen Waddle on your squad. And this Dolphins team has done a good job of adding free agents and drafting over the last few years. My only question for them is the defense, which I think is kind of on par with where Dallas is, is right now. So that could be a concern, especially going up against Josh Allen twice a year. That said, elite offensive play caller, and Dak has been dying for that. All eight years that he's been in Dallas, he gets more than one elite target, which... A lot of quarterbacks are, are, are fortunate enough to have. Dak has, hasn't had that, I think, in, in, in three or four years or so. So for that reason, Dak would be a great fit and why the Dolphins would be the third best destination for Dak Prescott in 2025. Lord Jesus, help this next one to pass. The second best destination would be my Pittsburgh Steelers. The Steelers, my Steelers, would be the fifth best option for Dak Prescott in 2025. And here's why. So listen, Pittsburgh is a team... It, that has been, well, run doesn't even begin to describe Pittsburgh. They've had not one, not two, only three head coaches since 1969, since the first year of the Nixon administration, okay? Chuck Noll, uh, 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 shoot, what's the guy's name? Uh, oh my gosh, Bill, Bill Cower, sorry, brain fart there, and obviously now Mike Tomlin since 2007. So, listen, Mike Tomlin never had a losing season. I don't put as much stock in that as others do uh, because I'd like there to be an upgraded quarterback play. There will be this season. But Russ is only on a one-year deal. Justin Fields, the Steelers, are likely not to pick up his fifth-year option. So both guys could be free agents. And if Dak Prescott's on the market with Russell Wilson, with Justin Fields, unless Justin Fields lights the league on fire, something that Russ, I don't think, is capable of doing at this stage of his career, you're telling me the Steelers with George Pickens, with Najee Harris, with Jalen Warren, and Pratt Fryermuth, and all these weapons, with more to come potentially in the draft and in free agency, with an upgraded offensive line, with... One of the best defenses in all football and the best defensive player in the league in TJ Watts. With this culture, you're telling me Dak Prescott would say no to Pittsburgh? You're telling me Pittsburgh would say no to Dak Prescott? My guess is if they come to Dak, if they come to Todd France, I, this, this to me is a prime franchise, and I believe this to my core, that Dak would take a bit of a pay cut to go to. Aaron Rodgers took a pay cut with the Jets. Okay, we've seen quarterbacks do it in the past. Dak's taking pay cuts. He's taking a cut in his salary, at least in, in regards to the salary cap hit in Dallas. So, and this would be a beautiful move, a beautiful relationship between Dak, Mike Tomlin, Steelers Nation, this Steelers roster, and this team with Dak. Folks, they won 10 games. They won 10 games with Pickett, Rudolph, and, and Trubisky. 
You put Dak Prescott in, who had one elite target last season, C.D. Lamb, led the league in touchdown passes and led a below-average Cowboys offense talent-wise to, I don't know, the best offense in football. You team him up with Arthur Smith, a creative OC. You give him all these weapons, George Pickens and Dak Prescott. Man! Please, Lord Jesus, let this happen. A year from now, in 2025, the Steelers are the second-best destination for Dak Prescott. At number one, the team that I chose... Well, I didn't choose. I chose the Steelers over when I was down to these last two as my lifelong NFL teams last summer and a team that lost the Super Bowl in heartbreaking fashion. Of course, I'm talking about the San Francisco 49ers. The 49ers are the best destination for Dak Prescott, and here's why. So I've been saying this for quite some time. This 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 marriage between Dak and Kyle Shanahan. Again, Kyle Shanahan's the type of guy to get the best out of everybody. It's why I have totally sold all stock on Trey Lance, even though he is young and hasn't played much, is because if Trey Lance can't work with a Kyle Shanahan, who's made Matt Schaub a pro bowler, who made Matt Ryan the MVP, who had us thinking Jimmy Garoppolo was good, who had us thinking Brock Purdy was the MVP of the league, and Purdy's clearly better than Jimmy G. Purdy's not the MVP of the National Football League. That's what Kyle Shanahan's capable of doing. You would have, again, this is another team, another team I think Dak would take a pay cut to go to because of what he has around him, because he has an elite defense, because he has guys like McCaffrey and Debo Samuel around him. And again, cheaper guys like Jawan Jennings, who have made a big impact in the Super Bowl. Jawan Jennings, go Vols. You give him these weapons, you give him that coach. Again, in an NFC West that I brought up earlier with Seattle, that in 2025 could be teetering just a bit. Good have new quarterbacks, unknowns coming into the division, and you have the Cardinals, who, again, will always mess things up. In a weak NFC, to me, that is prime, prime territory for Dak Prescott to go and win a Super Bowl. I, I'm, I'm the, under the belief that Brock Purdy, while he played fine, he played fine in the Super Bowl. You plug Dak Prescott into that Niners team for that Super Bowl, they absolutely win the game with all due respect to Patrick Mahomes because, again, Mahomes, this is why what he did was so impressive was because that Niners roster was so significantly, so much significantly better than Kansas City's roster. You plug Dak in, you're telling me he can't make that third down throw with two minutes to go? You're telling me he can't make some of those throws with in overtime with an opportunity for the Niners to at least go up a touchdown before the Chiefs got the ball back? My guess is... Yes, no question, undoubtedly, no doubt, Dak Prescott. The best fit for him would be the San Francisco 49ers. Thanks so much for watching the show on YouTube, and be sure to go click that big red subscribe button and check out the other clips and full shows from Carving It Up Live as well as our other incredible content creators here on the Grid Network.